Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. Today we are going to analyze a very interesting topic that is serotonin theory of depression. We are discussing this topic at the backdrop of a study that has been published by the University College of London saying that it is not necessary that the lack of serotonin leads to depression. What is the reason? It is not known yet as the complexity of the brain is a mystery to the human mind itself. So, let us have a look on the topics that we are going to discuss step by step. These are the many segments that we are going to go through. And if we are going to talk about prelims focus, it will be of course on serotonin. What is serotonin? What is depression? The status of depression? From the perspective of mains and prelims, both the part of analysis, like the challenges, what are the initiatives that have been undertaken by the government of India to address those challenges and the way forward. Okay. So let us have a look on the news piece explained new study that suggests depression is not caused by serotonin imbalance or chemical imbalance in the brain is now gaining a ground for so much debate that we have to talk about this. Now first of all let's know about serotonin. What is serotonin? It is a kind of neurotransmitter. What is a neurotransmitter? It is a chemical that helps to transmit message and in layman's term to communicate um, that is of course the message or the signal the communication part from one nerve cell to another okay and serotonin is the reason that we get you know regulations of mood sleep appetite and other major aspects of daily functioning so serotonin is a neurotransmitter that helps the body uh, the brain to communicate and regulate mood food uh, appetite sleep all these things are regulated by serotonin. And what is depression? Depression is a common mental disorder. Common mental disorder, especially in the times of post-COVID and COVID era, we see that more and more people are going into depression. Economic downturn is one of the reasons. Loss of loved ones is also one of the very major reasons of depression in the pre, uh, in the COVID era and the post-COVID era. Okay. Globally, it is estimated that 5% of adults, they suffer from the disorder, uh, disorder. Specifically here, the 5% is constituting those people who are getting diagnosed with it. People who are choosing not to diagnose or going to the doctor for it, of course, they are out of the ambit of the 5%. Such as a country like India, there, according to uh, the generations, older generations, there is no such thing as depression. But it does exist. Acknowledging is the first part to any kind of resolution or resolve. So, it is basically a persistent sadness. That means sadness that is continuing for a long time. We all get sad. It's a very common thing in human beings. It's, a, it's an emotion, right? But if a person is feeling sad persistently, challenges and, you know, uh, obstacles are there in everybody's life. My obstacles might be different from yours, but still, there they are obstacles, right? And it's okay to have obstacles, then only we become a better person when we overcome those obstacles. But if a person is being persistently sad over something, something is not right. Okay. And there is also a lack of interest or pleasure in previous rewarding or enjoyable activities. I might in, have been enjoying getting up early in the morning, going for a walk after that. But now I do not any longer enjoy those activities. This can be a symptom, not necessarily depression, but a symptom of depression. Okay. And tiredness and poor concentration, these are very common symptoms of depression. A person who is feeling continuously tired. Now, if we talk about the serotonin theory of depression, it was, of course, uh, given in the year 1960s. And it gained very importance, the theory that depression is caused by low serotonin levels. It got widely accepted in the 1990s. And also, because of this, the study itself, the antidepressant selected serotonin Reuptake inhibitor, this antidepressant came into existence and people started using antidepressant. So, antidepressants, they increase for a short period of time the level of serotonin and that, of course, has an impact on a person's mood and mind. So, it's kind of an antidepressant, uh, it's kind of a neurotransmitter increment is done through that antidepressant. And American Psychiatric Association still believes that serotonin is the reason the lower levels of serotonin, serotonin is the reason why some people are depressed. And it says differences in certain chemicals in the brain may contribute to symptoms of depression. So, it's still a very popular theory that is accepted widely. And moving on, if we talk about 
the other parts of it, the idea of that depression is the result of abnormalities in the brain chemical. Serotonin, as we see, is the reason of getting antidepressants, the uh, you know origin and evolution of antidepressants, and this is 5-hydroxy tryptamine or 5-HT. The serotonin part, this is for prelims, I have put it over here. Now, these drugs, they are prescribed to 1 in 6 adult population in England itself. Just imagine the situation of the world. I am talking about the world which is developed enough to understand the importance of mental health. The first world countries I am talking about over here. And those countries where no such thing as depression exists, which leads to no diagnosis and hence no solution for it. What about them? Moving on. If we talk about the highlights of the current study, it has taken an umbrella review of the entire situation of uh, depression, where it says whether the current evidence supports a role for serotonin in the etiology of depression and specifically whether depression is associated with indication of lower serotonin concentration or activity. Simple words, it wanted to ask a question that is serotonin really the reason lower levels of serotonin, lower concentration of serotonin is really the reason for a person going into depression. This was the question that was asked. And here, most influential and extensively researched biological theories of the origin of depression were also taken uh, into consideration, the previous theories. And then it was said that it is not supported by any scientific evidence. Human mind, a mystery as it remains so. And of course, if we talk about the study, the previous accepted theories. These were the reasons why antidepressant came into being. What about them? Should people stop taking antidepressants? No, the study itself says that it doesn't mean that you stop taking antidepressants. There is might there might not be any scientific evidence, but there can be a placebo effect. Placebo effect is the effect that I might gain from just the psychology I have for a certain object, like I have a pill. Okay, and it might not have any scientific support that it will cure my depression or any other disease that I have. But if I think, if I make my mind to think that this particular pill is responsible for making me happy and I, in, and I have the intake of it, then that is placebo effect. The pill might start to actually help me, although there is no scientific evidence for that. Okay. So, you see, many antidepressants, they might, if not, there is, sometimes it might happen. They are a, uh, you know, there are a, there is a reason that certain pills might even lower your concentrations of serotonin or not, uh, it might not affect you at all. It is not scientifically based that those serotonin pills, antidepressant pills are going to increase your serotonin level and it is barely distinguishable, distinguishable from a placebo or dummy pill when it comes to treating depression, same thing, that it might just act as a, as a placebo. Okay, a dummy pill. Now, also the antidepressants they are in the use because of the generalized emotion. So many people have been taking it. They might be, you know, noticing some kind of changes in their mood, and that is the numbing effect on the people's mood that antidepressants have. So these are also the reasons why antidepressants are still in the use. Now, statistics on mental health. This is with respect to what is the statistics of not only depression but other mental health as well. Now, worldwide, WHO has said that 300 million people have mental health issues, okay? And according to WHO, stress and depression, these cases are, in, and these cases have increased by 18% in the last decade. Also, between 65 to 7% of Indian population have mental health issues. And, of course, between 65,000 to 75,000 psychiatrists are needed in India. So, there is a treatment gap as well. No psychologists, no psychiatrists, no social workers to help the mentally, medically challenged, okay? And between 1 to 2 crore persons in India have severe men mental health issues and that also includes schizophrenia and bipolar disorder. Very dangerous diseases if not treated on time and not treated well. Moving on, you see according to various estimates on expenditure on mental health, it is just 0.06% in India which is very less. What are the challenges? First of all, the high public health burden. First, because According to the National Mental Health Survey of 2015 and 16, which is the latest one, it says that 150 million people across India are in a need of attention when it comes to mental challenges. And there is also a lack of resource, lack of resource which tends to 
lack of psychologists, lack of psychiatrists, lack of uh, social workers and NGOs who are actually wanting to help people in the arena of mental health. Poor awareness there is about mental health symptoms. Whenever we tell anybody that a person is mentally ill, there is a kind of stigma that is so deeply entrenched into our society as a whole that we tend to have a negative, you know, negative outlook for that person. The person is in, is in a need of help, not any sort of taunts, not any sort of stigmatization, specifically if we talk about the poorer section of the society and the disabled uh, old section of the society, they are at the uh, meeting end of the entire stigmatization that is revolving around mental health. And of course, it leads to abandonment of them as well. And there is no proper rehabilitation. If a person has been treated, well, how to rehabilitate that person? In order for that person to absorb all that treatment, the person has to be rehabilitated to a space where he or she can actually process what has happened with them. Okay? So that is the problem as well. There is also a rise in severity. Rise in severity specifically here, we are talking about the COVID-19 challenges. Because of the lockdown, many people have gone into depression and other mental challenges have occurred with them. And that can be definitely in proportion to the economic downturn has taken that has taken place in their life. No money, uh, no, you know, sometimes it can happen when money is the source of happiness, minimum happiness that I can say for some people, specifically the poorer section. Now, what are the initiatives that the government has taken? If I talk about constitutional provision, Article 21 deals with the right to life with dignity. Dignity means that any person will have a life in which the person is not discriminated against or stigma does not exist against that person. So that is the basis of any kind of initiative that we are taking. National Mental Health Program uh, that was started way back in 1982 and was re-strategized in 2003 talks about giving attention to people who are mentally ill throughout the country. Mental Health Care Act of 2017 made it a right for every person in India to access medical help when it comes to mental challenges and under this only section 309 of the IPC where um, and made uh, it it was made that the attempt to commit suicide under this was made an exceptional because certain people are in a need of help with respect to mental abilities right that is why it happened and Kiran helpline which was launched in the year 2020 by the ministry of social justice and empowerment to take care of the people who are you know who have any sort of anxiety, depression, or any sort of mental challenges, 24-7 it is a helpline. If you are in need of it, please do access it. Get on helpline. Moving on, if we talk about the way forward, we first of all need to acknowledge that mental issues do exist. Sometimes people might show us symptoms, but we are not able to acknowledge them. We can just brush it off by saying, okay, that person is crazy, that person is mad but that person might be an, in a need of help. If a person is behaving in, uh, in an unusual fashion, it's a call for help. Please try to listen to it. Okay, so active policy intervention is needed and resource allocation should be done for the government. GDP should be increased, right? And we have to work as a society with the help of NGOs, with the help of ASHA. We should ensure that we understand what it, how, how hard it is for a person to live with any mental issue and remove the stigma. You can also be, you know, a victim of such mental health issues. So you can also help other people to rise up if you, you know, sometimes it happens a person who is in a need of help. If that person helps another person, they both can rise together. Innovative models are needed in which private sector, academics, social workers from across the globe can be, you know, integrated into, a, into one channel and then help each other. Moving on. Uh, let's talk about the question for today. What is the serotonin theory of depression? What are the challenges related to mental health? Also discuss mental health initiatives undertaken by the government of India in 254. Okay, so that's it for today. Tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment. Until then, stay updated and thank you so much for watching.